Here I want to give you some basic guidance to finding your way around code in Delphi, which you can see here, or in Lazarus. It doesn't matter whether you're using Lazarus on Windows or on the Mac. So most of the things I'm going to talk about now will be dealt with in much greater detail later in this course. I just here want to give you a quick tour of the code so you can recognize which bits are important and which bits aren't. When you're working with code, you'll be working in units. Each code file is a unit. The code file begins with the unit name, which is used to identify it, and that follows the keyword unit. The object Pascal language includes a number of built-in words, reserved words, or keywords, which define certain special features of the language, and unit is one of them. Now, here you see another keyword, interface. Interface is a section of the Pascal program in which your various type declarations for classes and other sorts of items in your code will be defined. A class is what defines an object. I don't go too much into that at this point as I'll be looking at object orientation in considerable detail later in the course. But there's one type of object that you really have to know about from the outset, and that's the form. In Lazarus, I can toggle between the code and the form using this menu item up here. If I were in Delphi, I would use the tabs down at the bottom of the code window here. Now, the form is the visual user interface. When I create a form, I can just drag on buttons, for example, from the toolbar up here and drop one on. And behind the scenes, the form definition is modified as Delphi or Lazarus adds the button to my form class definition. Don't worry too much about exactly what this all means in terms of object orientation. Just be aware that the form definition is maintained automatically and you shouldn't need to modify that by editing it longhand. Now, the interface section is followed by another section called implementation. Implementation is where the actual executable code is written. Bear in mind that when you've got, for example, a form, tform1, the implementation, the code that's executed, has to match the declarations of the procedures and functions in which that code occurs. So here, for example, I have tform one error message uh, procedure, ERRMSG, and this has been pre-declared in the interface section. In some projects, you'll have multiple files. This project here, for example, comprises the files shown here. And in that case, when one file or unit uses another file or unit, it's the items that have been declared in the interface which are visible. So, for example, wombat main, this is an adventure program I look at later in the course, uses the add obs unit, which you find here. So the items that have been declared in the interface part of, of add obs are visible within Wombat main. In order to make anything in that unit visible, I've had to add it to this users section at the top of the source code file. Users sections usually contain a number of items, some of which are the standard units provided by Delphi or Lazarus, for example, sysutils, classes, graphics, controls. And if you write your own code units, you need to add them explicitly if they are required, as I've done here with my own units, adv obs and adv consts. One thing that I need to mention before moving on is this mode specifier up here. Now, I'm in Lazarus, and I can use the help system to find out more about this. So this is a compiler option, and it sets compiler compatibility mode. Lazarus supports a number of dialects of Pascal, and sometimes it will support a Delphi-compatible version. Mostly, I'll be using the object Pascal mode. This is broadly compatible with Delphi, 
and it's the standard version that we will normally use in this course. You'll also see items such as this, which are comments. So I'll explain comments later in the course, but comments are contained between, in this case, two curly brackets, and there are other comment delimiters, which I'll explain later. When a comment is embedded into code, it's ignored by the compiler, so it acts as documentation. Let's look further down, see what else we find. Here's another keyword, var. This is where I declare some variables that are accessible throughout the unit. The keyword const declares a constant, which is a, a value that can't be changed in my code. A variable can be changed, and I'll explain those again in more detail later in the course. And now here's the main part of my program. This is divided up into named sections called procedures, and they can also be called functions. A procedure is a subroutine which does not return a value to the calling code. A function is a subroutine which does return a value to the calling code. Sometimes you'll see at the top elements enclosed between a pair of parentheses. Those are arguments that are passed to the procedures. Again, don't worry if you don't understand what this means. All will be explained later. One thing you'll see a lot of in Pascal are these two keywords, begin and end. Begin and end are delimiters. You can put lines of code between begin and end to be executed sequentially as a single block. In other languages, for example in C-like languages such as Java or C++, curly brackets are used and they serve a similar function. And you'll also see semicolons quite a lot. Semicolons just end a certain expression in Pascal. So, for example, a single call to a procedure, as show message here, is ended with a semicolon. And there's a semicolon at the end of the procedure header, as you can see here. Procedures can themselves contain their own blocks of variables, and that's what you can see here. Now, if I don't put blocks of code between begin and end, for example, the call to display here, then that is executed as a single line. So, for example, if I put another call to display here, since I haven't got a begin and end enclosing those two lines following the if, then only this first line will execute. If I wanted both to be executed, I would need to add a begin and end. One other thing you'll notice is that sometimes there aren't semicolons at the end, and that's something that's required by Pascal syntax when, for example, an if test is followed by else. But again, this is something you don't need to worry about at the moment. Just beware that you will occasionally see that syntax. These are more comments. These are, in fact, line comments, comments that run for a single line, and those begin with these two slash characters. Another thing you'll see a great deal in Pascal, and it's worth knowing about from the outset, is this colon equals. This is an operator. It's an assignment operator. What it does is it evaluates whatever is on its right, and the value that returns is assigned to the variable that is on the left. So that, in short, is a very brief tour of some of the contents, typical contents, of a Pascal file.